Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to a high level best of three between in the bottom right spawning as a red pros player playing for team Basilisk. It is Trigger sharing a team with Cero and Rainer. Surely must have prepared him for this particular matchup as his opponent here in the top left playing for team Starcom. It is the player formerly known as Vanya, Wayne. Well, formerly known as Vanya, formerly known as Ratata, of course. Uh, multiple name changes over the past uh, few years here as it's going to be Wayne versus a Trigger here in this best of three. Uh, both of these players actually very young. I was just looking up some some of their statistics before this and Trigger born on uh, 11th of July 2002 I think it was so uh, 21 years old recently turned 21 and now capable of drinking in the US. Uh, and Wayne is uh, 22, I think. He was somewhere somewhere in June 2001, was born. Opens up with a hatchery forward. So, yeah, two very uh, young players, or at least in my mind, young players. It's funny because I've been aware of Wayne for a very long time. Ratata, Vanya, Wayne has been around the scene for, I feel like, six six years or so. It's been a, you know, a, pr a pretty prominent name. While Trigger has been, you know, up and coming for the past year and a half and has really reached a very stable level where I think he's capable of taking out most of the, well, at least the, the, the second tier of pro gamers. You know, not your Serals, not your Rainers. He can take him out, but it is unlikely. But uh, for just people like Lambo, Elazer, uh, he, he really has a, a, a very good shot of winning doesn't always win when he's not necessarily favored but i think he's someone that's very dangerous for a lot of different players he also has a style that tends to be very aggressive you know focused on trying to deal as much damage as possible and here we go gets a drone kill uh, to kick things off immediately oh this is cute look at that second drone kill just kind of using this uh, this space behind the minerals to continue harassing here second adept on the way as well probe is showing up too i think this is a mistake this is a bug not a feature as uh, well the second adept is struggling uh, getting anything done here this shade is finishing up at a very unfortunate position as one more worker gets cleared here two more workers get cleared perhaps number three goes down this has been a very frustrating well first three and a half minutes here for wayne as he loses five workers here, will end up killing... No, he won't even end up killing this adept. This adept manages to shade in towards the main base where it's going to get one more worker kill. Six workers for two adepts. A lot of mining time lost. A third base already on the way here for Trigger as well. This is where the Oracle obviously is going to go to try and defend this for a little longer. This is not a proper wall. I feel like Wayne could have just pushed himself in here. Yes, now Trigger fixes it as he has a double building wall, which is possible on this map now there is a fun little feature on this map that i don't think everyone's going to be aware of i was made aware of this by the map maker who made neo humanity so there is this little dot here this 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 you know these stones here and this is a pylon indicator but if you build your ooh, hold that thought no actually i can continue explaining this is not going to be important if you build your pylon right on top of the pylon indicator this is going to require three buildings to wall so this helps players that don't know how to wall whatsoever. It allows them to build a wall with three buildings. However, if you are good enough, if you're a professional or very high on the ladder, you should know that the optimal position is going to be one above these stones. And the map maker did this on purpose. It's a way to help the lower level players without making the game necessarily easier for the higher level players. So there's still a skill difference. And of course, you can also use that as a way to remember where to place your pylon on the map if you wanted to two building wall you can just put it one above the the, the black stones that that are over there and i thought it was such a cute little feature i haven't seen map makers as much try to tutorialize players on, on how to place their buildings we have seen it um you know making it more clear where reaper jumps are with these types of pillars and you know making it clear where the path is so i guess it has been becoming more and more common and i really do like that i think that is such a cool little feature i wish all maps had it like uh, a, a, a spot basically where your first pylon could go it's not the optimal place for your pylon to go but it's still going to create a wall uh, that's going to help you so that definitely should help lower level protos players and then of course you also need to be aware of that's why the stones are there a lot of people just look at it it's like why the heck are there stones here um i actually got tricked by it a couple of times as well i was like man this looks like a pylon indicator. Let me build my pylon there. <laughs> Let me build my pylon there. Build a terrible wall. I'm like, oh, this is garbage. <laughs> Which idiot this is? 
And I discussed it at a, during a home story cast. And then the guy who made the map, he, he messaged me or sent me a tweet. And I was like, hey, uh, this is why it's there. And I thought it was such a cool little thought, such a cool little idea. So I figured I'd share. Another thing that's pretty cool here is that uh, Wayne is opting to go for what seems to me uh, a pretty hefty road to Rever draw in, which is going to be the... Oh, very late DTs here. Going to try and get a recall on this Archon. I think it might barely survive. Yep, it's going to drain a bit of the battery as this push is now happening. One, two batteries going down. But there's no units in Triggers Town. Yeah, this is actually an issue. We have 70 workers, but legitimately no units at all. Four gateways, so can produce something. I'd love to see just pure stalkers being warped in at this point. We have a lot of static defense being thrown down as well. That's a quick response here out of trigger. This stasis ward is going to be absolutely vital. That is not big enough. He needed some ravagers in that stasis. Uh, these cannons are also in a position where they can be hit by a single bile, both of them at the same time. As there's a little bit of overlap there. In, oh, poof, look at that. Yeah, two cannons get cancelled here. This is a good initial hold, though, out of trigger. Super battery has been shot. Where is the Overseer? Has the Overseer been sniped? DTs could be moving forward right now, trying to deal some more damage, but instead will end up moving back. I'd love to see a little bit, yep, more static defense here being kind of, uh, you know, set, put up in the back here. Once again, cannon, uh, the same square where the battery can also be hit. So far, Wayne not quite using it. He's trying to hit Archon, Stalkers, and Immortals with the Ravager Balls. This control out of trigger has been really quite good for Archon still alive. The Roach count isn't all that high. Uh, Void Ray will get taken out here as it is 68 workers to 58. If Trigger survives, he pretty much straight up wins the game as he's going to be working with a better army composition, way better eco. There is a fourth base on the way here for Wayne as Wayne is moving forward. We'll now start trying to snipe these Immortals. The Immortal in the back very low does get taken out. Uh, there's one more battery further back as these batteries slowly but surely will gain a little bit of energy and keeping these batteries alive and then just having that little bit of energy regeneration often can be very big in these types of situations super battery is going to be available here as well as it's going to get activated we'll keep this immortal alive wayne opting to once again throw three bios at the same spot where the stalkers can just micro away rather than taking out a battery for free and i think this is going to cost wayne in the long run he's focusing too much on trying to instantly win the game rather than you know, taking out these structures and then winning with, with this type of follow-up push because he wants to keep on going. He's going to hit a couple of Biles here on the Immortal. That was definitely worth it as uh, batteries are healing cannon in the back, not really providing any coverage quite yet. Now we're going to get a couple of shots in. Immortal being targeted down, and I think Trigger is going to be forced to tap out regardless. Does not have the production uh, to really get enough units out on the map. Doesn't have enough, have enough DPS altogether. No air units to help out. As GG gets called, and Wayne wins game number one here on Neo Humanity. It's one of those very frustrating games if you're a Trigger, in my opinion. Um... You know, you, you open up so well, kill, what, six workers with two freaking adepts, den deny a lot of mining time, get a fast third base off of a single gateway. Uh, I, I think he just got a bit over eager. You feel invulnerable at these points. You know, your early game was so good. What's the chance you're going to die to an all-in? Well, if you don't scout and you don't respond, the chance is actually pretty darn high. And especially given that the map is Neo Humanity, uh, I perhaps would have uh, would have wanted to see a little bit more scouting coming out of Trigger, more conscious scouting. I think what often happens with protos is that you feel like you're gathering enough information just through your harass that you feel relatively safe and often you do get enough information through your harass to be safe but sometimes it is good to just get some explicit scouting you know just really throw those uh, revelations on the hatchery see what pops out of the axe uh, check the gas count just fly around with your oracle rather than trying to harass just gather information because it is so tempting, right? You see one or two vulnerable drones, you go in, uh, try to pick off those drones, but you take damage on the Oracle, and that means your Oracle can't dive any deeper to gain information. You know, you're just so focused on killing drones and so focused on, on, on making sure that you don't die to links at home where you might want to use a pulsar beam as well. Like, it, I don't know. It, it, it often feels like that the, the Oracle gets used a little bit too much as a harassment tool and too little as a scouting unit despite it having some fantastic properties as a scouting unit high speed it flies it has the revelation ability etc etc so 
which is something to keep in mind there, especially if you're ahead, of course, on a map like Neo Humanity, where all lanes are very common due to the rich Vespine Geyser on the forward base. Now, Trigger is just gonna chill, move back and forth between the main and the third. I move my pro back and forth. He's just patrolling this area right now, wants to see if any links will pop here. And indeed, uh, a single pair of links is going to pop from this hatchery. Quick little chrono, adapt start. Another chrono, go down on the okay, on the adapt we go. Very cool, we have speed, we have stargate. This is pretty much the standard currently in Protoss vs Zerg. We have a, a very standard type of setup for most build orders, but with a lot of variety behind that. So you got your glaive build orders, you got your blink attacks, your or whatever the heck it was the trigger tried to do in that last game, like some type of DT follow up, which uh, I wasn't particularly fond of. But then again, it might be good, I don't know. These DT builds, they, they always look really bad if they don't work. They also look kind of bad if they do work, but it feels good when you're playing them, let me tell you that much. D there's just something beautiful about the DT. I don't think there's anything more frustrating than losing to invisible units. And I kind of dig that. Like it's, it is a beautiful thing, yeah, at least in my mind. We have a, an Oracle that starts right now. Gonna get Chrono Boosted across the map. We'll see what uh, Trigger's going to be capable of doing with that. This is a difficult map, by the way, for Protoss players. Let's face it, it's it's not easy. It's not easy being a pro toss on this map, as the, the the first four bases are relatively defendable, but once you get to a fifth, it becomes impossible. Moving out on the map means you're always exposing yourself to just, just massive open areas in which Zerg just thrives in that environment, right? Massive open areas. That is their uh, forte. That's where they love to be. Nexus now gets thrown down. This is a tight timing here out of Wayne as he sends 10 links across the map. That's going to be a cancel for sure. This Adept perhaps in some trouble. Nice blocking though. Trigger here. Finding the sweet spot is still going to most likely end up losing this Adept. No. Gets a couple of kills here on these links. Pylon will need to be cancelled. But this is a save if I've ever seen one. Three worker kills on the other side as well. This was not a brilliant start as he lost his nexus. It's going to be severely delayed, but it could have been much, much worse. Oracle once again jumps in. And now jumps out of its life as it dies to the queens into the oh, into the snow. Pew. Snow and trees, so what a way to go as an Oracle. That's how I want to go as well. In the snow and the trees. Something beautiful about snow. This map in general is very pretty. This map gets a lot of hate because uh, it, it's kind of Zerg favored. But it is a very pretty map. I like the fact that there's constant snowfall as well. It looks nice. At least to me it looks nice. I'm a sucker for these uh, snowy environments. I can't help myself. Oroko here is actually using this pulsar beam a little bit liberally. Just <laughs> turning it on whenever he feels like it. I'm not a huge fan of that. It's still on, actually. That's draining a lot of energy right now. Tries to get in towards the third base, but by the time it arrives, it only has energy to kill, what, four more workers. Uh, it's not entirely brilliant. It's gonna get, well, actually, quite a few workers here. I'm not gonna lie. That was good. Six worker kills uh, in the past 30 seconds or so. Total amount of worker kills at 11 as Trigger. Absolutely destroying Wayne here in, well, the first, what is this? First five minutes and 30 seconds. You now have a Templar Archives as well as Charge plus one. Four more gateways coming in. We have Lair as well being researched. That's about to finish up in two, one. Poof. There we go. Lair pops up. And two more gas to start over here on that third base location. Now, personally, what I would like to see is a really fast fork with this. But I know Trigger likes things a little bit more aggressive than I do. You know, we all have our preferences. Trigger is someone that likes to kill people. You know, if he has an opportunity, he kills them. I kill people with kindness by allowing them to be very far behind economically. But they still, you know, there's still a, a little bit of hope. There's still some hope when they play against... Ooh, is this just the same exact Rochalin? 
Yep, it's off of four gases, this time without the rich Vespine geyser. And this map is significantly worse for it. It's gonna take a gold behind it. So it, there will be a bit of a mineral boost at some point. As we see an Archon drop coming out into a Robo Bay with double Oracles. This was a triple Oracle opener, don't forget. One Oracle just went down. So now Trigger is going to spot this Roach Count. It's like, well, that's fairly high, isn't it? Why are there so many Roaches there? What's going on? And I'm actually wondering what's going on, because this seems freaking terrible for Wayne. I mean, only has three queens to start walking. Hasn't really started walking yet. Creep spread is pretty horrific as well. There's no Nidus network with this. There's no Numataste Carapace, so dropping those queens is going to be impossible. I think the Oracles by themselves are just going to be fine. Look at his battery setup as well. They definitely have Trigger realizing what's kicking up over here. Knows that this is a high roach count. Starts picking up, starts dropping, starts picking up, starts dropping. Oracle's fairly low on energy. That might be an issue. As these Archons now dishing out so much damage with the constant heal of those batteries. This is actually fairly annoying to deal with here for for uh, for Wayne. Once again, four Archons is going to be the, 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 the dream setup for Trigger. As uh, the super battery is healing up some of these Archons going to continue doing that most likely there we go lots of, of of shield restoration here coming down archons all still alive pro pool right now don't forget there's a fourth base behind this for trigger last time he did not have a fourth base or plus one this time he has both and plus one is definitely going to be helping out here we have a lot of cash in the bank for our canadian protos player as well who is already on eight gateways and is adding two more disruptor production has started we have four more templar that are being warped in as these pickups on the Archons haven't been perfect. We have two Archons warping in a little bit too far forward as well. We're now taking quite a beating. Uh, one of them will get taken out before finishing the morph. The other one will finish up. But Disruptors are out. The drones are being produced again. We see a Hydra then. We see an Evo Chamber. And it now is Wayne's turn to try and transition out of this. But that's going to be one hell of a task. Starting with this Ling run by trying to take out a fort base. It's just not going to work. There's seven Zealots that get warped in. They have charge. They have plus one. They're going to rip through these links like they don't even exist. As we see uh, Trigger most likely. I wouldn't mind if he just sets this up as a run by immediately as well. You know, get a battery, a cannon over here. Maybe start something that resembles a wall at this point as well. I think that would be a healthy move to make. While Wayne, I think Wayne's ideal transition out of this is going to be get up to 82 workers, infestation pit, nine gases, lurker then, and then just get spines. Spines at bases. And, and go for, for, for Hydra, Roach Hydra Lurker. That is really all you can uh, all you can do at this point if you're Wayne, because his setup is not good. He's down in upgrades. He's going to be down in upgrades. He's down in tech. He's going to remain down in tech for quite a while. This is a tiny army, which kind of gets a, a you know, a, an over-exaggerated response here out of Trigger. His entire army is on the right side. The real threat comes from the left right now. Ten swarm host? I'm not so sure about this one. Swarm hosts are really good if you can get them early on in the game, but by the time these swarm hosts arrive on the other side of the map, Trigger is practically going to be maxed. He has insane production, he's on four bases, has good enough static defense, is on both bases, that he can hold at least the first wave. By the time the second swarm host wave hits, uh, well, I honestly think carriers might be killed at that point already. That's how late it's going to be. See an attempt here, an assassination attempt on the third base is going to fail miserably, just like these purification novas are also failing miserably. Now the swarmos are getting spotted. Big hit here, right on top of those roaches. As the prison makes its way over into the main base, we have 10 gateways done, and that means 10 zealots with plus two being warped straight into your mineral line. That's what we call a problem over here. As queens are going down, drones will start falling as well. Plus one finally finishing up for Wayne. But Trigger, he is in such a good spot right now. He has a, a solid army composition consisting of Archons, consisting of Disruptors. I'd love to see a second robotics facility being added in. And maybe adding a couple more Immortals. I think Immortals really have, have some serious value in an army like this. Just keeping the Roaches at bay. So you don't constantly have to shoot those zoning purification novas. Fifth base going up is hilarious to me. 
The fact that Trigger is building a fifth here just shows how far ahead he is. Usually, if you're playing against Swarmho, you're afraid of building a fourth base because it's going to cut in your static defense count. But here, Trigger, he's so rich. He has everything he wants. He can throw down that fifth base, no problem whatsoever. We have another warp in here in the main base as the, the layer had been taken out. Ooh, Trigger not actually A-moving these Zealots. They're just going to walk past those roaches. Now heading in towards the natural, where they're going to be capable of dealing quite some damage. Drones being taken out at the gold base as well. Purification of us being sent out. Uh, there is an observer, I think, with this army because the creep is disappearing. One more purification nova needs to actually hit. This is kind of scary if the next locust wave ever comes out. But, well, is it actually scary? I think Triggers is absolutely destroying his opponent here. As eight more zealots get warped into the opponent's main base, we have 17 drones going down. And with the fifth base on the way, uh, despite the fourth base dying, I think Trigger is still in a position where if he doesn't completely mess this up, I don't really see a way for him to lose here as this base is being taken out as well. Uh, we have another zealot warping in towards the main. What is the actual unit count? It doesn't matter as GG gets called and Trigger dies up the series. That was a way cleaner defense overall by Traeger there. And I, I'm still not entirely sure about the Swarm Host follow-up. I, I, I think that's... Uh, it's not it, like I said. I, in my mind, the only real solution there is going into Lurkers. I think Banelings is unrealistic because the Archon count is already too high. There's too much splash. Your creep threat is going to suck too much in general. So I think going into Lurkers and, and playing a very kind of defensive game maybe eventually with a massive like 15 or 20 lurker push is is the only real solution i have and, and altitude still a good map for zerg maybe you can come back in that way i think swarmhost was uh, a little bit naive a little bit naive what's wayne doing here looks like a 12 pool to me is this overlord finishing up at the perfect timing for these uh, first two larvas to turn into zerglings drone making its way across the map so it's going to be a uh, 12 pool here into a hatchery to probably try and block the wall we'll see if that's going to be possible is he going for a full wall oh no this is what well, this is a partial wall second gate can this fit a stalker through i don't think it can but not entirely sure we have a second piling going down five worker pool downstairs first zealot gets chrono boosted cybernetic score can start instantly because the lack of money that we have here Okay, rebuild uh, like kind of a secondary wall behind here. Now, this hatchery should never really finish. If it does, I'd be surprised. And honestly, if it does finish, I don't even think it's going to be that good here for for Wayne. Second gateway should be the target of these links. And that's going to be the target of these links as well. Salad actually kind of far away from safety. So this is this is a pretty scary move to pull here. You're just gonna be, you know, pushing in and Trying to get some damage on those links, making sure your gateway stays alive for as long as possible without getting surrounded. Well, scrap that not getting surrounded part as this zealot is in a world of trouble. Probes need to be pulled back home. Adept needs to start, but there's no gas available at all. Oh no, trigger with that chrono boost on, <laughs> on a gateway that can't do anything. This is, uh, this is turning sour real fast here for our Canadian Protoss player. Who, ha who sees this hatchery finish in his natural as well. We have a full wall now with this pylon. Is the queen gonna pop out? No, we see a cancel on the queen. Wayne doesn't feel comfortable with it. Of course, Wayne believes that there's going to be adepts popping out soon. Instead, that's going to be a zealot once again because there was no gas available initially here. Now, links have popped out. Take out a single worker. Zealots are walled out of the main base. Oh, no. Just looking on from a distance, seeing all these links pop in the main. This is this is terrible, terrible stuff here. A legitimately awful start for Trigger, who is still up in workers, but is going to be down bad the moment this hatchery finishes on the other side of the map. Still needs to deal with this brood links as well. As uh, I mean, this is it's just not going to be possible to do any damage with these two zealots i don't think so at least it shouldn't be possible there's one queen out already we should see more zealots on the way we still have links on the inside as well uh, i'm not entirely sure if oh my god he attacked his own hatchery he killed his own hatchery to try and kill this uh, this adept and uh, well it doesn't entirely succeed the adept still stuck in a corner second adept pops out right now i feel like this could have been played better perhaps using the brute links to trap the adept over here while sending the links in towards the main base one adept is still going to get killed here as links now try to make their way in towards the main at the same time it does feel like 
Uh, Trigger is dealing a bit too much damage here with the Adept on the other side, getting two drone kills, perhaps even getting a third if he target fires correctly here. Wayne wasn't paying attention, but the Adept does get to escape, so not the end of the world for Trigger, who's up seven workers, but down a base, is stuck inside with two Adept still, so that has some potential. There's no speed on the way yet. There is enough gas now to start speed potentially, so that is something. I wonder what the actual... It's so difficult for me often to to analyze these types of situations because I'm not so aware of where everyone should be in this particular setup. But we can just look at it, you know, from a defensive standpoint. So if you're Wayne here, you're going to have enough queens in time for the Oracle 100%. So that's not going to be an issue. You're probably going to have enough links to deal with these initial three adapts. I'm not sure if you can deal with four or five adapts. You're probably going to need slightly more links. Uh, and there's no third base on the way yet. On top of that, the overall drone count isn't quite high enough, in my opinion. So that is also something we need to definitely keep in mind. I really wish that Trigger were to move out with these adapts. Yeah, he, he really needs to do this. This is super important. Needs to force out links and ideally also deal some damage after forcing out links and five adapts which i think is what he has right now right i think is a good number at least one adapt at them so it's going to be four adapts i think there's enough links already three queens on the low ground two base lair that's somewhat surprising because that's going to cut in the eco here for wayne so wayne is giving up a significant amount of eco here in order to to do what to get more tech third base now on the way as well here for trigger i actually think trigger's position is is not half bad all he needs to do at this point is not die is this going to be like a two base hydra in of some sorts this almost feels like a mio esque play you know that second gas here as well we don't have link speed though which is kind of surprising we now see that twilight council being scouted third base is on the way we don't have a roach war in eden either like it's just a confusing situation all around in my mind Single Oracle into Twilight. Going up to four guys. Is he playing two base Spire? That's not actually a build though, is it? Especially not against Stargate openers. Kills two workers. Good movement here out of trigger. Okay, it's going to be Hydra. I mean, technically possible, but it's going to be difficult to get anything done. Because one of the main things that when Mio Micah plays these types of builds is that there is a link flood that starts it. And that's often supposed to do a lot of damage towards the third base or clear some adapts, force some more warpings to delay infrastructure. Right now, there's really nothing delaying Trigger's infrastructure. So Trigger, what Trigger can do here is he can go up to four gateways. He can go up to a forge and of four gateways, four or five gateways, cannons and batteries, you can have continuous worker production while also getting static defense if you require so. And I think he is going to need some static defense because this feels a whole lot like a Hydralis call in. We have the muscular augments on the way. Groove Spine sure is to follow as the forge here is now finally finishing up. We're on three gases, which is a setup that I enjoy. I think this is a very, very nice setup here for Trigger. Like, he's, he's going to be capable of producing a lot of units, have good eco, and get static defense at the same time. So defensively, he's looking solid. I'm loving the call, by the way, of only having a single oracle. I think it's actually quite smart. Rather than investing more in those oracles, he said, hey, I'd rather have quicker tech, have some mobility here with my Blink Stalkers. In case it's Roaches, that's good. In case it's Hydras, that's good. In case it's Spire, that's good. So everything that comes from two base, these fast Blink Stalkers are kind of solid against. And... Uh, I, I really do enjoy that. Despite what felt like a very poor start here for Trigger, I think he recovered beautifully with some counter harass, uh, with solid decisions all around. Look at his setup as well. Battery, 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 cannon, cannon, cannon. We have a, cattery, a cannon in the natural, we have a battery in the natural, we have a wall there as well, of course. And with the stalkers, you can kind of poke at this army and then pull back. Now, this was a significant investment into static defense you could almost say that he kind of over responded to this threat but a lot of hydras were built as well and the earlier you build hydras the worse your eco gets it is very expensive to build hydras because they also cost gas so you have to you know rather than mining more minerals you have to force yourself into gas and mining gas is so so expensive to do for sure because it means you're not getting the economy that you want 
We now have a lurker then, as well as an infestation pit. Pretty much what I said Wayne should have done last game, he's gonna do this time around. And this is not necessarily a sign of him being very far behind, but it is a safe move if you are behind to go into. Because once you get the lurkers, you stabilize, you have the opportunity to start outplaying your opponent again. It's basically like, um, it, it, it's not a great... Uh, thing to have in your back pocket but at least you have something in your back pocket you know it's like it's not the it, it's not going to be like a, a three star um, three michelin star meal that's in your back pocket it's going to be like like an apple you know but if you're stuck in the desert i'd rather have an apple than nothing and uh, the apple is always there for sure they can always still tech into lurkers and reasonably expect to survive to that lurker stage and then you can try something you know because maybe maybe you can get to safety maybe Maybe you can get some water somewhere and you, know, you can build from there. And, and this is how Zerg wants to do it. In this particular situation, I don't even think the spot that Wayne is finding himself in is necessarily awful. Like, I, I think Eco genuinely sucks. The upgrades are quite late, but his tech is actually really quite fast. There are no immortals out. This is still largely a gateway army and gateway armies freaking suck against lurkers you need some type of immortals you're gonna need storm and you need to be out on the map i think trigger might just be too afraid to be out on the map currently in order to be dealing with those lurkers charge being built which i think is good i like that call how many batteries is this that is seven batteries we have three cannons that are being constructed as well couple of spines so the moment as a protos player you're seeing spines at bases this is a telltale sign that an all-in is coming even if it is this high on the worker count it basically says hey i don't want to leave any supply at home to defend my bases instead what i want to be doing is i want to defend with static structure so that i can have as much supply on the other side of the map here we see a combination one lurker one spine and i think wayne is just aiming here at, at, at a timing wait did he build double lurker then look at that Double Lurker Dance. Um, wow. For the, he really wants to hit a tight timing then with the Seismic Spines and Adaptive Talents. I thought he was going to wait for Max, honestly, but perhaps he wants to move out just a little bit quicker. Has 11 Lurkers already. Two more on the way. I like that Trigger is on the map. Even if it's only with those Stalkers, it's better to be on the map with something than with nothing. Up to 10 gas is Wayne. I think this push is going to be kind of hard to hold. There's three Immortals out. There's two more on the way. Even if you get up to like six, seven immortals, if you're not in position, life can still be very difficult. Definitely true. Extractor now is being hit by these stalkers as uh, the lurkers are hitting the stalkers at the same time. Colossus Hallucination walked up here. There's no vipers out with the army of Wayne, by the way. It's important to note. His supply is not growing quickly, and the reason for that is because he's investing a lot of money into getting more lurkers. So he's going for an absolutely humongous... Uh, lurker attacker look at this 18 lurkers more spines going down as well so it's investing in defense uh, for if there is a run by and at the same time just getting more and more lurkers if these lurkers manage to move into a good position i think it tends to be almost impossible to break this and i think we're now in a position where that's the case i i don't think it is really viable here for for trigger to look at this spot and say to himself hey i can fight this uh fairly easily because i don't think he can I don't think he can at all. There's a, a lurker set up here. Wait, are they hold fired? No. If these were hold fired, that would have been used. But even like this, this flank is getting completely destroyed. Trigger not paying attention whatsoever here. Is losing a lot of Templar. Lots of damage on these immortals. Oh no. Trigger did not expect those lurkers to be here. And to be honest, neither would I. There was no detection with this army, and it's just simply too many lurkers. The only real solution to a problem like this is the base trade the moment you see the move out with a lot of zealots. But of course, that's where the spines and the, the, the lurker at home definitely come in handy to deal with that. This was a beautiful setup here out of Wayne, who is who's completely destroyed his opponent. Despite Trigger having an okay setup with a lot of static defense, having quite a few immortals as well, if lurkers get in positions you can't beat that army anymore you can't fight straight up into it it is simply not possible this is something that pro players need to get in their head so you have to stop them from getting there and if they do get there you give up the base and you counter attack you don't attack into a position with 16 17 lurkers that is ridiculous that is not a good move it is a very powerful siege unit but it is a unit that is bad in base trades 
And yeah, now it's gonna be too late as Wayne 194 supply against 77 trigger with the GG as Wayne wins the series with a 2 to 1 score. And that, my dear friends, is going to be it for today. I hope you all did enjoy this. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and bye bye.